All right, how's it going, y'all? This is my continuation of the TrueNAS Core 12 setup guide. And in this video, we're gonna be going over how to set up SMB, as well as data sets and access control lists on TrueNAS 12. Basically completing from the last step, getting you up where you can start accessing the files over SMB. So between NFS, SMB, and AFP, SMB is by far the most supported across Windows, Mac, and Linux. And so I would highly recommend using it especially if you're going in between environments. It is a little bit slower when you have a lot of very small read and writes. However, with large sequential read and writes, it by far is the fastest. And so for me, with my 10 gigabit connection to the TrueNAS build for video editing, I do not notice any kind of latency whatsoever compared to that as if it was stored on my internal SSD. All right, so in the last video, we basically set up TrueNAS and have created a pool. And so that means we've got somewhere where we can put our data. So what we are gonna to have to do is first create a data set. Basically, it's a subfolder within that larger pool that you can start operating data on. And so to do this, it's really easy. All you have to do is go ahead and log into your TrueNAS, and we're going to go into storage and go to that pool. And now all we have to do is go over here and say, add data set. So go ahead and give it a name. And this one is going to be my editing folder. So I'm gonna say edit. And for sync for this, I'm going to disable sync. That's because this is used for video editing. And so everything is backed up in line. So it really wouldn't matter if I had an unexpected power failure and all of this data got corrupted as I've got it set up where I can very easily restore from backups. But I would highly recommend setting this as standard unless you have a good reason not to. It really speeds up performance when I do. So for compression level, I'm gonna just do gzip, because that way it'll compress some of the files, but realistically, we're talking about video files here, which are already about as compressed as they can be. And so for a time, I'm gonna go ahead and disable it here, because I really don't care about the access time for these video edited files, and it will really speed things up. And finally, I'm gonna leave off dedupe, as it takes a lot of resources, and I'm going to say it's an SMB connection. Let's also go over to the advanced options and make sure there's nothing that we need to do here. And through here, there's nothing we really want to change. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and submit it. All right, and so now we can see that we have a data set within a pool. And so this is what we're gonna interact with as a shared folder, essentially. And so we can see that the compression has been changed from LZ4 to GZIP1. And so that means it's going to be faster because it's not gonna be trying to compress too much which is going to be a lost cause because these are video files. All right, and so now we've got our data set set up. So the next task we need to do is go ahead and give everybody accounts. So we're gonna set up ACLU. And so first I'm gonna go into accounts and go into groups. And I'm going to create an account for groups. And so I'm gonna call this editors. And so for anybody we put in the editor group, we're going to make sure they have full access to the editing share. And so we're gonna say submit. And now I'm gonna go ahead and create a user. I'm gonna create one for myself and just click add. And set up a username, email, and now a password. And so now I'm gonna give myself a new primary group, but for my auxiliary group, I'm gonna make sure to add myself to that editor group. And so now we've got directory use and permissions. We're not setting up home folders right now, but just so we can be safe, I'm gonna give myself right access to any of the groups I've got access to. And so I'm going to say that it's a pseudo account and I'm gonna go ahead and click Submit. This is my personal root account. So I'm just gonna click Submit, and I've created my first account. You can go through and create additional accounts very easily like this. All right, and so now that we've got this user set up, let's go ahead and enable SMB. So we're gonna go into Services, and we're gonna scroll down to SMB, and just click Enable it, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure it starts automatically. And so now we can do additional configurations here, but I'm gonna go over that another time. 
This is really where you want to be entering your auxiliary parameters for better setup. So I'm going to just go ahead and cancel out of that as the defaults work just fine. All right, and so now let's go ahead and go into sharing. This is where we actually configure our SMB share. And so we're just going to go ahead and click add. And so now we're going to go to the path for that edit file. And so I'm going to click select that edit data set. And now we've got it set up. Basically here we've got all the options we can need. And you can even choose purpose, which kind of gives you default parameters. So if you had multi-user time machine and things like that, it would basically set that up for you. We're just going to go ahead and do default shares. And so we're just going to click submit. All right, so now we've got it enabled, but now we need to give that editor user group access to the editing data set. So we're going to go ahead and go back into storage and pools, and we're going to edit this right here, which is that data set we did. And all you have to do is say edit permissions. All right, and so here is honestly one of the most confusing things about TrueNAS is how to give who permission. And so what we're going to do is we've got this access control list. And so basically this says that the owner and the group owner have access. And these are the owners right here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say that the editors own this and we're going to apply it. And so we should be able to click save. And now all of our editors will have access to it. But now if we go back in and edit the permissions again, we could also just say, hey, let's just add this group right here to the specific permissions. So I could say the group editors have access to it as well. It's kind of confusing, but once you get past this, it's not too bad. But since I said the editors own it, we're going to click delete and they should have full read write access to it. All right. And so now we've got it all set up. Let's go ahead and go on my Mac and we're going to go ahead and mount this drive. So I'm in finder. So I'm going to click command K and I'm going to mount the IP address with SMB. If you don't know how to do this, I explain this in other videos. And just like that, it has already worked. And so that means we're good. But let's go through and do a quick performance test on it. So this is without really any tuning at all. So the performance is okay, but remember these are four SSDs, so that should be really fast. The reason I'm getting insane write speeds is the fact that I've got that sync disabled. And so it can continuously just write every single time. So in my next video, I'm actually going to go through and explain how to set up these tunables and 45 drives has an awesome setup that really can let you get a lot of performance out of this. So I'm just going to stop this. And so really that's the end of this video. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in TrueNAS in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.